Hello everyone, this is Brody. Today this is a uh, voice recording to make a particle animation. So let's start. So here we are in Blender. Uh, recently I was uh, testing something about uh, surface tangent and I was using particle emissions as a tool to test it. Uh, I have some more thoughts, but I didn't have time to do that. On the other hand, uh, uh, geometry nodes is uh, uh, working based on your CPU. So when you get uh, billions of particles, it can be extremely slow, especially comparing to recent developments of uh, particle system in Cinema 4D. It's a kind of nightmares. So I was doing some benchmarks uh, to see how can we uh, get the best performance and minimize the cost of time in rendering or the final results. And uh, yes, so we are going to try an animation here. As always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. So let's uh, uh, start with a triangle. How can I actually make a triangle? Uh, let's take a curved circle and take the resolution to 3. Then we have a triangle. And basically what I need to do is just to rotate it. Let's just take a transform geometry and then let's uh, combine Euler rotation. So that uh, we can take that time info node onto the z-axis. You can set a degree. I'm going to crank that up. So something like that. Yeah, I think this is a maybe nice enough speed or maybe a little bit slower. Something like that. And we're going to use the points on this curve as a way to emit particles. So we're going to use the uh, array on spline. Actually, we can just uh, resample curve. And then just uh, take a billion counts. This count is very important because this count determines how many particles you emit per frame. So uh, we are going to add a simulation zone and we are keep adding these particles. Take a joint geometry. So now what we will see is that so we are generating this whatever stuff. And basically this is yet. We're going to make this curve into a point. So we take a curve points preview. The reason I use this curve points preview uh, is that uh, if you use the curve two points, it does not have this kind of set radius, which will make it, oh, this is fine actually. What's the reason? It was kind of very huge in the past, but it seems working fine now. Okay, I like it. Let's forget about it. <laughs> so, uh, next is basically just to emit these particles. Uh, we are going to store some particle parameters. Uh, set particle parameter. The key point is that I need uh, an edge of these particles. Velocity, I don't need any of them. So let's uh, store name the attributes to get the edge. Set as an A. Uh, this is very important as we are going to use a time for to set point radius. So you can see it's uh, growing its radius as the H. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse the relationship of it 
So we start from zero radius and then this radius goes down after it reaches its edge. And this fourth is by default working between the range of 0 to 1, so you remap 0 to 1, which is really a map range node actually, but you can see their sides are different. And then I'm going to decrease this uh, radius value. So you can see uh, we do not only generate the particles, but we are also removing these particles as they are getting very old. So this is the way you can actually tweak the change of this kind of curve radius. Okay, so now we get to the basic uh, setup of that. Then we try to displace these uh, particles. Well, I'm going to set a position. Sometimes uh, what people think is that you can use a uh, noise texture. But uh, there are many downsides of noise texture, as you can see that uh, it's not very obvious here, right? You can see that these particles will uh, end up falling to a single trace, which is not really nice. That's why we try to use uh, clear noise turbulence into the offset. And then you will see that they never really overlap each other. And then let's uh, decrease the frequency a little bit, also decrease the scale. And uh, Basically, the rest is about the tweaking the parameters. So you have this emission being done. And you can see because they do not really converge, you get a very nice, very weird patterns. And you can take some randomness into these uh, particles velocity. But just uh, remember that this ID will change every frame, so you may want to use the ID generated with these uh, set of particle parameters. So now we have this effect. It actually looks kind of, kind of very cool. But the issue, as I said previously, that uh, there are always several issues to worry. One thing is that uh, you are emitting like 5,000 particles per frame. And for geometry nodes working on a CPU, it will become slower and slower as you are catching more animation. Uh, also, another issue is about motion blur. Uh, this is a limitation in Blender that uh, whenever you get kind of index change, the motion blur will not work. The motion blur will only work if everything is set at the most beginning and it does not change its way around. So as we are adding more particles every frame, the motion blur will not really work. Okay, so we need to solve the problem. There are many different ways, pros and cons, and the final result. So today, I'm actually going to test a method which I haven't tested in the past. Uh, I'm going to record the velocity of uh, these particles moving. And uh, once I have the velocity, I'm going to instance some points with a kind of raw geometry. No, it should just be hit. So make that into the z-axis. You can see these are uh, these are curves. So we take a value precision. Uh, we can make that into 2 only. 
and I'm going to decrease it to scale. Okay. And uh, Where is my oh because uh, yes now this is how it looks. These are just the straight lines, so I need to align rotation to velocity. This is actually just the align order to vector, but uh, I already predefined the velocity as a name attribute for the vector. So this may save maybe two to three nodes, something like that. So now you have these kind of particles moving. Okay, so this is a kind of a really cheating method. But the issue is that if I go to the render view, I do not uh, see them. Because these are not uh, visible geometry. We're going to make them visible by making that into a hair curve object. As I said, this is really a cheating method. <laughs> and uh, this hair curve object will automatically create a surface deform, but that's not what we are going to do today. And uh, we can remove this plane because it's no longer needed. In order to make these, part, uh, these hair curves to show, we need to realize the instance. And then I play this animation, you can see this is visible in the final render. As you can see, uh, maybe I should make that more obvious if I take the emission. So set material emission. So now you can see the hair in the final rendered view. But if you're going with the plane, then you do not see it. If you turn off the overlay, you do not see it. But with hair curve, you see it. So this is kind of a difference. And I expected to save the performance because otherwise I have to bevel curve, then it generates additional geometries will slow down your computer significantly. The reason I make that into a certain length. Uh, the reason I made that into a certain length is because I want to use this lens to replace the motion blur. So that uh, the motion blur is the essentially just the kind of echo of uh, your motion path. And since we do not have motion blur in this case, I'm just uh, making a straight line to mimic sort of sort of result, and I hope it works. It was just uh, an assumption, and I, I don't know. And the rest about making particles really like particles is that you need to generate more amounts of particles. to make it uh, kind of a volume like. And uh, the rest is about the parameters. Yeah. So I don't know how things will actually look like in the final results. Maybe this is a complete uh, failure. You don't know. And uh, you never know. But I hope it works. It was really a hope. Uh, if you want to set the particle radius, then you can go to the curve and uh, making the strand into strip so that you can set curve radius on these strips. But I don't think it's necessary. Maybe, uh, maybe just to keep that as a strand. And uh, also we need to deal with something about uh, the Shader. Maybe we can add some transparency to it. Uh, 
I don't actually know if it will work for. Actually, it does not seem to work. Um, I don't think the. It seems like the hair curve object will not take the transparency. This is a bummer. I don't know if this is the intended or just something not being implemented yet. Um, I don't know if it doesn't work. Uh, it makes my life a little bit difficult. What the heck? Um, well, this is a. Uh, this was unexpected. Okay, anyway. But this is the kind of result. The rest is about. Uh, for example, let's take a. No, actually, I already have the age, right? Uh, let's uh, store the time for of result. So that we can use it in the attribute. And then maybe color ramp. Uh, we make that uh, very saturated in the middle. Yeah, it works. I don't know the, which color I'm looking for, but anyway. I hope it, I, th I think this is it. The rest you can do by yourself. You have, you have ID, you have age, you have four. Try to play around with it, and I, I hope it works. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.